Hi, I'm Shifesh. And I'm Vanchika. Welcome back to another episode of The Friday we Show. We hope you had a great week and are ready for some fun stories. This week we'll be focusing on the 2022 Winter Olympics. The Winter Olympics started two weeks ago on Friday, February 4th. It's held once every four years and features sports practiced on snow and ice. The 2022 Winter Olympics will be held across three different zones, Beijing, Yangqing, and Zhangjiakou. There will be 15 main sports, including alpine skiing, ice hockey, and ski jumping. Currently, Norway is at the top with 12 gold me medals, and Germany is in second place with 9 gold me medals. The United States is in third place with 7 gold medals. One of these gold medals was made by 29-year-old Erin Jackson. She became the first black woman to win a speed skating Olympic gold medal with a victory in the women's 500 um, meter on Sunday. She also became the world's number one speed skater at that distance with a time of 37.04 seconds, edging out Japan's Miho Takagi, who took home the silver medal. Jackson's historic performance almost didn't happen because she didn't qualify for the U.S. Olympic trials. She got a spot on Team USA only when teammate Brittany Bow Bow gave up her place on the 2022 team. And now some more interesting stories for you. Using a modern process, MIT chemical engineers have created a new material that is stronger than steel and is light as plastic and can be easily made in large quantities. Until now, scientists had believed it was impossible to make plastics to form 2D sheets. Such a material could be used as a lightweight, durable coating for car parts or cell phones, or as a building material for bridges or other structures, says a professor of chemical engineering at MIT and the senior author of a new study. Polymer scientists have long thought that polymers could be made to grow into a two-dimensional sheet, they would, should form extremely strong, lightweight material. However, many decades of work in this field led to the conclusion that it was impossible to create such sheets. In the new study, experts came up with a new process that allows them to generate a sheet called polyamide. For the building blocks, they use a compound called melamine, which contains a ring of carbon and nitrogen atoms. Under the right conditions, these monomers can grow into two dimensions, forming discs. Because of the materials self-assembles, it can be made in large quantities by simple, simply increasing the quantity of starting materials. The new material is found to be four to six times stronger than bulletproof glass and twice that of steel even though the material has only about one-sixth the density of steel. Gas can't get through the material either. This is certainly a fascinating discovery, and scientists are excited to put the material into use. Would you like to drive an electric car? Of course you would. They are much better for the environment than your grandpa's gas guzzler. So why doesn't everyone choose electric when they are searching for their new ride? The biggest issue people have with electric vehicles is range. They are great for day-to-day -day driving around town, but on long trips, you have to take a break every couple of hours to charge your car. Experts are working on a solution to this, and one idea is getting closer to reality. Last week, a partnership with the Michigan Department of Transportation was announced to establish a wireless charging demonstration project that will include a one-mile stretch of road to recharge EVs while they drive. The project is expected to be launched next year in Detroit at the site of Ford Central Transportation Innovation District and will provide the tech that, that can wirelessly, wirelessly charge EVs while they are in motion or stationary. There are some similar pilot projects already operating in Germany, Italy, and Sweden. The inductive in-road charging technology could be a game changer in long distance driving which will sell more electric cars but even not, even more importantly, allow for long distance trucking, trucking to go all in one on electric vehicles. In the February edition of Nature Plants, Chuck Cannon, PhD, director of the Morton Arbitarium Center for Tree Science in Lisley, Illinois, reported that old and ancient trees greatly changed the overall genetic diversity and composition fitness of their surrounding populations. Collaborating with scientists at the Tushia University in Italy 
and the University of Barcelona in Spain, he said that the findings also indicate that, tr that these trees contribute to the long-term survival of the forest. To put it simply, according to the authors, ancient trees have survived countless environmental changes over hundreds or thousands of years, and in turn, this genetic resilience is passed down to the rest of the forest. Moreover, these old trees can absorb more carbon dioxide than other trees. Ancient trees are certainly both helpful and interesting to the environment. Jonathan was brought to the island of St. Helena's, where other giant tortoises were living, by Governor Sir William Gray Wilson in 1882. Thought to be born in the year 1832, Jonathan's age is really only a guess, based on the fact that he was fully mature when he arrived, making him at least 50 in 1882. The Guinness folks say that he has been alive for more than two centuries. He was around for two world wars, the invention of trains and automobiles, and the end of slavery. He's lived through the rise and fall of both fascism and communism, and he existed before the light bulb, the photograph, the telephone, and the Eiffel Tower. Jonathan is part of an endangered species, but one that is famous for their long lives. In his lifespan, 39 U.S. presidents have been inaugurated. An Aldebar giant tortoise named Adwega, which was presented to the British East India Company, was thought to be 255 when he died in the Calcutta Zoological Garden. As for Jonathan, he is still healthy and well, though he needs some help from the caretakers. Though Jonathan is blind and can't smell well, his hearing is great and he loves the company of humans. Back in his homeland in the Seychelles Islands, the conservation program Nature Protection Trust of the Seychelles has produced a new generation of criti critically endangered native giant turtles, raising 160 juveniles so far and introducing them into the wild. Hopefully, Jonathan will live long enough to see his species flourish on his home island. In 2020, fewer than 2,000 western monarch butterflies were counted spending the winter in California. That number has now increased to more than 247,000. The news was announced on January 25th by the Xerces Society for Intervertebrate Inter Conservation. Data was gathered in the group's western monarch Thanksgiving count. Emma Pelton is a biologist at the Xerces Society. She's excited about the news, but rem she remains cautious. She says that it will take a couple more years to know whether the monarchs will come every year, or if it is just this year. The reason for the increase is unclear, and numbers are still lower than they once were. In the 1980s, about 4.5 million monarchs wintered on the California coast and in northern Mexico. Hopefully, monarchs will start coming back every winter to California in even larger numbers. There are a lot of people struggling with mental health issues due to the pandemic, trapped in their homes, away from friends and family. The past two years have been hard. Doctors are starting to treat patients with a dose of nature. Thousands of experts are now prescribing free national parks passes to patients. It started in the U.S., but Canadian healthcare practitioners are taking the idea to another level for the physical and mental health of their patients. Uh, Parks Canada can prescribe the annual Adult Parks Canada Di Discovery Pass from the Canadian Parks Authority, which is normally $72.25 for adults. The pass gives people free entrance to over 80 national parks, national historic sites, and national marine conservation areas. Scientific studies have found that being in nature can have a profound influence on our health and well-being. The park passes last for a year, but if the program is successful, it could continue past 2022. After a year locked indoors, getting out into the wild sounds just like what the doctor ordered. That's our show. Hi, I'm Bunchko with this week's weather report. Today will be cloudy with a 3% chance of rain and a high of 70 uh, and a high of 67 degrees. Saturday will be colder than last week with a high of 68 degrees and a 4% chance of rain. Sunday will be even colder with a high of 62 degrees and a 4% chance of rain. Next week will be partly cl cloudy with an average high of 60 degrees and the week after will be mostly sunny with an average high of 70 degrees. Springtime allergy season has started for people with grass and pollen, pollen allergies so wearing masks is needed much more. That's it for this week's weather. Hi, I'm Shivesh with this week's brain teasers. Last week's primary brain teaser was a man pushes his car to a hotel and tells the owner he's bankrupt. Why? The answer was that he was playing Monopoly, and all classes got correct. Last week's intermediate brain teaser was, 
What inanimate object lives an exhausting life? The answer was an exhaust, and 402 got correct. Now going on to this week's primary brain teaser, which is, if you throw a blue stone into the Red Sea, what will it become? I repeat, if you throw a, bl a blue stone into the Red Sea, what will it become? This week's intermediate brain teaser is, um, I, come, I come on a roll, but I'm not toilet paper. I'm often clear, but I'm not a window. I often, I'm often put in the dispenser, but I'm not hand soap. I help you wrap a gift, but I'm not a pair of scissors. What am I? I repeat. I come on a roll, but I'm not toilet paper. I'm often clear, but I'm not a window. I'm often put in the dispenser, but I'm not hand soap. I help you wrap a gift, but I'm not a pair of scissors. What am I? That's it for brain teasers. Hey everyone, I'm the Sean with Sports Report. Let's start with football. The Super Bowl was played on Sunday, February 13th, and what a match it was. The fan favorite Rams were winning in the first half, but then the Bengals came back with a four-point lead in the third quarter. Then the Rams scored a touchdown and took the lead and kept it. They kept the lead for the rest of the game. They won 23, 23 to 30, 23 to 20. The MVP of the Super Bowl was none other, none other than the guy who made the game-winning touchdown, Cooper Cup. Now let's talk about baseball. Spring training is supposed to start next week, but probably won't because the players and the union can't come to an agreement about how much money they should make in their contract. The opening day of baseball will also be delayed because of this. Now let's move on to basketball. The Warriors lost to the LA Clippers 119 to 104 on Monday and also lost to the Denver Nuggets 117 to 116 on Wednesday. They will have played the Portland Trailblazers on Thursday and will play the Mavericks on Sunday. Finally, let's talk about San Jose Sharks. The San Jose Sharks lost to the Edmonton Oilers 3 to 0 and will have played the Vancouver Canucks on Thursday. They will also play the Las Vegas Golden Knights on Sunday. That's all for sports. We uh, we hope you enjoyed the Friday show. You can subscribe on YouTube. There's no school next Monday on the 21st for President's Day. This means there will be no Friday show either. But next Friday is Twin Day. Um, also, Light the Night, formerly known as Pennies for Patients, is a fundraising effort um, by the um, Leukemia and Limproma Society. Forest Park has been a part of this campaign for the last five years. This year's goal is to raise $12,000. It will run from February 7th to, the, to this Friday, March 4th. Go to the Forest Park, Park website to donate. Forest Park is having a kindness <coughs> challenge from February 21st to February 25th. February 25th is the on Honesty Character Assem um, Trait Assembly. See you in two weeks. Bye.